Welcome back to Houston Life. If you enjoy beautiful surroundings and a delicious glass of wine, California's wine country might just be the perfect destination for a fall trip. The wine grape harvest is in full swing right now, and our travel expert, Gabe Saglier, is joining us from Paso Robles, the heart of wine country, checking out some of the unique experiences, deals you can find. Okay, Gabe, so I know this wasn't just coincidental. You are there specifically <laughs> for the October grape harvest, correct? Absolutely. I mean, the, the buzz is building. It's crescendoing as we speak. This, by the way, is for you. I'm just holding on to this little, it's called a GSM blend, Derek, uh, from Booker Vineyard. I'm here in Booker Vineyard in the heart of Paso Robles. Uh, but yes, this is uh, the time of year with the summer crowns behind us, Derek. A perfect time to come out here and tap into the, well, the buzz that is in the air right now. The buzz. Okay, tell us a little bit more about Booker, though, because I was telling you during the commercial break, I used to ride my bicycle uh, through Paso every summer. I haven't heard of this winery before. A new one? Yeah, so this is relatively new. The brand actually dates back to 2001, but this tasting room uh, that I'm standing uh, in uh, opened up just three years ago. So one of the newer tasting venues here in Paso Robles, sustainably built. These guys built the tasting facilities uh, into the hillside, right, as a way to blend into the environment. So very sustainably thought of. And I'm standing in front of these Cabernet Sauvignon uh, grapevines. So these are grapes that have been growing over the last couple of months. And just this morning, overnight, so overnight is when they pick these grapes to retain their acidity. And then they go into the production facility. I've got, I've got to have a live camera there at the crush pad. This is the crew now coming in. They're starting to destem these grapes, uh, Derek. Then they'll begin to crush them. Uh, Rosé uh, might be on the shelf here in a couple of weeks, a couple of months. But something like a Cabernet Sauvignon that requires more aging time could be that you see the 2024 Booker Cab on the shelf in a couple of years. Um, but it is uh, Harvest Wine Month. Uh, this is an agricultural epicenter, as you know, Derek, three hours south of San Francisco, three hours north of Los Angeles. So a wonderful epicenter to meet your wine-loving friends, your, your ag-loving friends. I mean, there are farms and ranches here that you can, again, access uh, because the crowds have thinned out. You can mingle with the winemakers themselves. Uh, maybe you want to hop on horseback and traverse the vineyards. You can zip line over the vineyards. Wow. Uh, you can do e-tours. You can uh, do yoga. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it's a wonderful, open agricultural hotspot that again just becomes much more accessible and affordable as we head toward the fall season. Well, and you know, Gabe, I was just chatting with uh, a local chef friend here in Houston and he was talking about uh, he and his wife, they travel out to wine country in California all the time. There are a lot of California, Texas connections. So for people who are unfamiliar with Paso Robles, it's small town charm, right? A great foodie scene, but people might have questions about how to get to it. So you mentioned it's just kind of right between San Francisco and LA, closest airport to fly into is that what you recommend either one of those and then you drive the rest of the way well, yeah, that's one way to do it, LAX or, or, or San Francisco. There's a great little regional airport called San Luis Obispo, uh, SBP, and you're seeing more and more airlines uh, like United, American, Alaska that are getting flights on a daily basis to the little San Luis Obispo County Airport, and then that puts you about 25, 30 minutes from the vineyards of Paso Robles. So it has become over the years that much more uh, accessible. Uh, your chef friend, and by the way, there are these wonderful Texas uh, Paso Robles connections, especially when it comes to things like barbecue. Uh, the, the, the barbecue barbecue they do here. I mean, I, I, I love this, this stuff I get to eat when I go to Houston, uh, but there is a history to the uh, tri-tip that they, they do here. This is big cattle country, big ranch country, and some of these uh, uh, barbecue uh, foods are just uh, amazing. The downtown Paso scene, I've got to say, if you're a foodie, uh, has really blossomed. There are four Michelin recommended restaurants now in what is really this great little rural uh, old Americana town, this very nostalgic uh, part of California. It used to be a Spanish land grant back in the days. Uh, Paso Robles became a town in 1857, uh, and it retains that uh, farm country, rural charm to this day. Um, Family-owned ice cream shops, family-owned bakeries, uh, and again, a great uh, uh, eating scene as well. I know you're a fan of cocktails, uh, Derek. The mixology <laughs> scene here has really uh, grown in, in super creative, super innovative ways. Uh, so again, there's you won't go thirsty, Derek, uh, next time you bike your way. Hey, through Paso Robles. Yes, yes. No one will go thirsty. Thirsty. Um, okay, let's chat about the art scene as well. And the video you've been showing, Gabe. Obviously, it's such a charming, charming place here in Houston. We love our cultural uh, scene, yep. the arts scene. That is also one of the strikes there in Paso. 
Yeah, and there were some wonderful uh, muse historical museums in this area. Uh, but what I love here is, a, is something called Sensorio. And this has been getting global buzz. And you've got Smithsonian Magazine, a lot of international publications writing about this. So this celebrated five years just this past summer. Uh, but it started to create buzz from the day that it opened. This is set on 15 acres in the middle of vineyard country out wow. here. And it's a series of displays that play on light and shadow and sound. Imagine 100,000 plus fiber optic stems. These multicolored bulbs on top of each of them uh, that are all solar powered during the day, and then at dusk, when the night begins to emerge, the hillsides that undulate away from you come to life in this beautiful light, uh, and 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 then they're set, they're set to music. Um, and there are five different displays like this, a brand new one opened up the summer called Dimensions. That's uh, these more uh, sort of large scale metal uh, structures again, playing with light, playing with shadow, playing with sound. So very immersive. Audiovisual, multi-sensory. You grab a glass of wine as you enter this beautiful landscape. As the sun is setting, the moon is rising. Uh, one of the great art installments in the state, and again, getting a lot of national and international buzz this day, uh, these days. Called Sensorio, Derek. It rolls off the tongue. Sensorio. Sensorio, Gabe. That really there is beautiful. <laughs> I've never seen anything quite like it. It is uh, gorgeous, and I did it as a date night with my wife, and she still talks about it. Uh, it's it's a it's a must do. It, it it looks like it is. Hey, before we let you go, holiday time. I mean, here in Houston. We are hoping for cooler weather. It's gotten just slightly cooler uh, today and for the rest of the week. Uh, but it's also a great place to visit for the holidays. It definitely is. You know, again, I love the, the harvest season, October, November, because there's so much access to this wonderful land. Uh, but yeah, starting Thanksgiving weekend, in fact, Friday after Thanksgiving, Mrs. Claus is scheduled to arrive. She lights up the lights in that downtown Paso Plaza, and that ushers in the holidays that go through the December holidays and New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, that that whole period starting to become super popular here as well because of those speakeasy uh, uh, cocktail bars in downtown Paso, because of the dining, and again, because of the family friendliness as well. So uh, maybe if you don't have to or perhaps want to be home for the holidays, uh, Paso could be uh, the perfect place to spend them this year. My goodness. And uh, the perfect place to spend today, Gabe Saglier, Paso Robles, California. Thank so much for stopping by Houston Life. It's great to see you and uh, have a You don't mind if me. I sip this, do you? Uh, I don't mind at all. I don't mind. Uh, okay. Slightly I'll pour you another jealous. glass when you show up. Okay. It sounds good. Gabe, thanks once again. In the meantime, to our viewers, if you would like to connect with Gabe and learn more about his wine country picks, you can look for the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. And don't go away. Houston Life will be right back.